Hey guys, as um, most of you probably know by now, um, James was in a little pickle on Saturday and um, has hurt his back. Uh, we're in hospital right now, it's Tuesday afternoon. He got in on Saturday, so we've been here for about four days. Um, I say we, but it's mainly he's been here, although I have been here every day. Um, we just wanted to say thank you to everyone for the um, kind messages, the phone calls, the texts, the comments, the messages. Um, everyone's support has been really amazing and we can't thank everyone enough for um, all the care that they have shown James through this pretty tough time. Um, amongst the care we also received a lot of questions and um, rather than kind of addressing everyone individually we thought it'd be a cool idea to kind of get everyone to send through their questions um, and James will address them in a YouTube video so that's what we're just about to show you um, we'll do an update in maybe a week or two as well so if you have any other questions following up this little update um, you can leave them in the comment section below on this YouTube video or you can flick us a text on Instagram Saturday I decided to go mountain biking with a few of my friends and we'd all come down this one uh, downhill section probably three or four times and I was coming around a bend and kind of just lost the front wheel, kind of washed out a little bit and then kind of sent me over the handlebars and into the stump of a tree. Um, not a huge tree but still a stump that definitely would not have moved and um, yeah, I just hit my head, like head first, and I fractured my 7th and 8th rib, fractured my T2, T3 um, spinal processes, and then I also punctured my left lung. Um, it's been four days since the accident now, just been given the all clear to get up and walk, um, sit up like I am now, and I have a full spinal clearance which is great um, my probably the thing that's hurting the most is my mid back through that thoracic area and then also uh, to take a deep breath in uh, my left lung is quite restricted um, in terms of how deep I can breathe kind of gets to a point where you get about 20% of your breath and it kind of just locks up and it feels like someone's stabbing you in the in the lung so they're probably my biggest things but I'm you know, keeping quite positive kind of puts a bit of a spanner in the works in terms of competitions in the next couple of weeks um, I plan to go to the Gold Coast this weekend to talk at a health summit and then I plan to do a live announcement at uh, Brisbane in Brisbane and then uh, after that I was heading to Dublin to compete at a sanctional event but looks as though that's probably not going to happen. Um, then the weekend after that I plan to uh, do an Ironman in Bustleton so um, a couple of things might have to change but you know I'm staying positive and I know that I can work on a bunch of cool recovery things when I get home to help speed the process and make it a good strong fast recovery. A lot of people are asking how long to recover I know it's something you don't you don't know? So, in terms of length of recovery, um, the doctor said for the bones to heal six weeks. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say if I'll be able to do it faster or not, but I definitely will be doing everything I possibly can to help make it as fast as possible. But they say six weeks, and I can't lift anything over two kilos. Will you still be aiming to compete at the Games? Best of luck for your recovery, Lana Marie. So, Alana, will I still be aiming to compete at the Games? The answer is yes, 100%. Um, I will, you know, get through uh, my recovery process, get straight back into training as soon as I can without pushing things um, too crazy. Um, I want to do all the right things and I don't want to uh, hamper my health long term. So, yes, I'll, as soon as I heal up and get back into training, my aim will be to compete at a sanctioned event and uh, make it back to the games in 2020. So 365 said, how many times did Ruzzy say, oh no? <laughs> Soul 365, how many times did Lee Ruzzy say, oh no? <laughs> Probably at least 15. <laughs> he said it a lot. So <laughs> to put this into context, 
Lee is a good friend of mine, he's also Welsh, and he came around the corner and saw me laying flat on the ground, actually kind of lifeless, like this. And uh, when he came around the corner, all I heard was, oh no, man, you all right? Ah, <laughs> oh, that hurts. Uh, and yeah, uh, he was he was worried, and all I need all I said was I just need five minutes, man. Just leave me here. And uh, he just sat with me and finally got me up eventually. But yeah, he was freaking out. Obviously, you're going to take it day by day. Um, but Fit Appeal by Kim Seely asked, what does the recovery plan look like? So, in terms of a recovery plan, getting back from, I guess, a bit of an injury like this. Um, I write a recovery plan for my members through Ultra Instinct every week. I'll basically follow that and probably just intensify it a little bit more because I won't be able to train as usual. So getting sunlight every day, getting to the beach and earthing, um, making sure my nutrition's on point, making sure I'm staying hydrated, making sure I'm getting good quality protein in to help build back my muscles and not be too catabolic, uh, make sure my bones are healing well. Um, I'll be floating a lot, that's for sure. Um, I have a float tank at my gym, so I'll be in my float tank likely every day. Um, I'll also be doing a lot of napping, a lot of sleeping. Um, I'll be using my sauna. Um, basically every particular protocol I can follow when I can stretch, I'll stretch and just try and keep my body moving as much as possible without affecting the healing of the bones. Um, but yeah, it'll just be a lot of working in protocols, things of, things of that nature. Did you get a concussion? Did I get a concussion? No, I don't think I did. I didn't feel sick. Um, my helmet worked very well. Um, I just had a brand new helmet um, sent over to me from uh, Fox Australia and here it is, actually. Uh, I got one of the ProFrame helmets. Uh, obviously, took the sun, took the visor off. Um, gave it a good hard crack at the back there, um, as you can probably see. Um, and then gave it a good old crack right through the middle. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see it, but I'll have a photo of it. Um, basically, goes from here all the way through to back here is fully cracked. Um, yeah, so I gave it a good number, but uh, lucky I was wearing this. I highly recommend wearing a full face helmet if you're doing downhill. As I said, I wasn't doing anything stupid when I did it. I just kind of came off awkwardly and there was a tree stump there and um, just, you know, landed, kind of like speared it with my head, which is not great. Uh, so I would always wear a really good quality helmet and you know, to be honest, if I'd probably been wearing some type of body armor along my back as well, um, you know, I probably would have been even better. So if I was to go back out and do it again, even if I was just going for a leisurely ride with my mates like I was doing, um, it'd be well worth investing in that too. You know, for an extra little bit of money, saves you getting a uh, tree branch, uh, stuck in your spine which is pretty much what I did and that's how I kind of took off uh, fractured those two vertebrae um, basically got a, a tree a tree uh, uh, tree branch kind of just nicked it as I landed on the tree A Jones 80 said just to add detail about the story how did your bros get you out of there so uh, in terms of how I got out of the uh, downhill park um, I basically hit the deck, didn't lose consciousness, consciousness. I lost sight for maybe three or four seconds, um, but then I was just laying down, couldn't get my breath, um, was kind of just planted on the floor, and then when my mates came, uh, they were just nice and relaxed, except for Ruzzy. Nah, he was all right. Um, oh no. <laughs> he was just saying, oh no. Nah, he was good, he was really good. They were all great. Uh, I just said, give me five minutes, guys, I just need to, lay here for a bit. I kind of moved my feet, moved my hands, 
and realized that I hadn't done any, well, I wasn't, you know, in the worst shape possible. Um, eventually when I got, you know, push up off the ground into an all fours position, I kind of realized I could stand up and uh, basically got up. They carried the bikes and gave me a, a hand getting to my feet. And once I got to my feet, I just walked the trail back, all the way back to the car park, probably about a mile maybe. Um, took a little while to get back there, um, but just keeping a really straight back, really straight neck. Uh, my traps and my rhomboids got really locked up, so I could tell that there was a little bit of damage in there. That they were so locked on that there was a potential issue, so just made sure I stayed really, really straight. And then once we got back to the car, um, we had contemplated calling an ambulance, um, but it was really easy for me to sit into the car, so uh, basically sat in the car and the hospital was only literally a three or four minute drive away, so lucky enough, uh, they just jetted me over there, I got out, sat in a wheelchair, they wheeled me in and then took it from there. Ben Deneen, the one life, how's the bike? So the bike actually wasn't my bike, it was a friend of mine, Adam's, uh, and uh, yeah, it's actually perfectly fine. Funnily enough, kind of fell off, uh, fell off the bike, the bike was fine, lost the lost the, uh, the drink bottle, but that was it, other than that, it's completely fine. Yeah, I have a couple of comments about the beard, um, someone said, please shave, another one said, Darren Britton said, didn't Kayla pack your razor? And normally I don't let the beard get this long, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to move my hands. We have priorities right now that go a bit further than... <laughs> yeah, the Actually, beard. Dex Hopkins, keep growing that beard, big boy. Thanks, Dex, I'll grow the beard. <laughs> I'll try anyway, this is probably as long as it'll get. Murray785, are your dreads okay? The dreads actually cushion the landing a lot inside the helmet, I would say, so good work. All 30 of you guys. <laughs> Interesting question, don't know if you have an answer to this. Flynn Guerin says, what sort of protocols will you be doing to ensure you don't lose too much strength gains? So in terms of uh, protocols to follow to minimize strength loss, um, you know, I guess that's a difficult one. Uh, you just kind of, you know, have to make sure your nutrition is as good as possible. But then you also don't want to overexert yourself with exercise um, while you're trying to heal your bones. Um, the more the more that we can kind of keep them still to heal is the better. But uh, that also doesn't do much for your muscles and um, them getting catabolic. So uh, I'll make sure that I'm getting adequate protein. Um, if I can sit on the bike trainer, I will um, just. Uh, try and keep my legs moving um, but yeah it'll be a difficult one I, I think it's just following working in protocols making sure that I'm doing all the right things in terms of what type of food I'm eating um, I think if I, if I can eat really really well during this next period for the healing process that'll also uh, try and uh, keep as much muscle and strength on as possible but at the end of the day um, I may lose a little bit, but that's okay. We'll be able to rebuild it nice and fast. Marcus Lou says, how can we as your community support you practically on your road to recovery? Um, I guess in terms of support um, on the road to recovery, uh, uh, I guess just probably try and stay up to date with, um, I guess, how I'm, how I'm recovering and you know, take from what you like, um, leave the stuff that you, you don't like, and and if, you know, you can take one thing away from it, and even if it's as much as, you know, make sure you're wearing a good quality helmet when you do things like this, then that's probably the best way you could do it, and maybe spread the word be between your friends and your close ones that uh, may be doing some type of outdoor activity where there is a bit of risk, like anything, um, just make sure you wear the protective gear. Um, if I wasn't wearing my helmet, I would probably not even be sitting here right now. So, 
um, make sure you wear a helmet. I'd probably even suggest getting some body armor as well and and that would you know make a big difference in terms of coming off and having a minor stack or a minor injury or you know breaking bones so just uh, maybe spread the word about that and that'll probably be the best way you could do it.